All right, let's add in our enemy. It's a very similar process to adding in the player, but we're gonna give the, the enemy some autonomous functions, some AI, some ability to make decisions and kind of attack on its own. And that's where the magic comes in. So first things first, right click, insert new object, and it is going to be a sprite game object. Then click where we want it. I'm just gonna put mine here, sure, why not? Now we're going to add in all of the animations for the, um, the, the enemy, the Cyclops in this case. Open up my RPG assets, then I'm gonna go into Actor, and then I'm gonna go to Monsters, and for me, I'm gonna use the Cyclops 2, which is this green Cyclops here. I think it's gonna contrast well against the red ninja. So what I'm gonna do is gonna grab the entire sprite sheet. This is a four by four sprite sheet, and we're just going to use a couple of the different animations um, in our game here. So I'm gonna drag that in, and then import from sprite strip, and it is four by four. Replace entire animation, import. Okay, so now we have all of the frames. This first animation I'm gonna rename to just be idle. This is going to just be the very first frame of the entire animation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down, I'm gonna click this first, uh, or the, the second frame, hold down shift, grab the last frame and then hit backspace. And that's gonna delete every other frame of animation out of this um, sprite here. Cool, create a second animation. This is going to be the walking animation. Then I'm going to go in and grab that same sprite sheet, the exact same thing, import from sprite strip. It's gonna be a four by four, just like before. But now I'm gonna grab just the frames of the animation where the Cyclops is facing me. We're just gonna use the generic facing you um, to do the entire animation whenever they're moving. That way we don't have to keep track of which direction the player is and then play the animation based on where the player is in relation to the enemy. That's not gonna be worth it in my opinion, so we're just gonna use the front one. So I'm gonna delete every other um, frame of this animation besides where the Cyclops is facing directly towards me. Now, if you're doing a different monster, you're gonna have to play with this and figure out what you like the best. You might not have a four by four animation or sprite sheet. You might have a just the walking animation, something like that. But just so you know, the idle animation is just the first frame of the walking animation, and then we're only gonna be using the walking frames that the, the monster is facing us, because that just makes the most sense in our game. All right, let's go ahead and close that up. We have both animations in there. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this enemy from sprite to be enemy. It's all set up. Now we add in some behaviors. So let's think about what we want our enemy to be able to do. I want it to kind of just stay in a stationary spot, and then when it sees the player, it starts to move towards the player. And then if we hit the enemy, the enemy flashes to show that we've damaged the enemy. So let's go into those behaviors and see if we can find something that'll do that. So let's add a new behavior. I want that that looking at part first. So if the if the enemy can see the player, Okay, so if I just type in C, okay, that doesn't do anything. Um, well, we've got we've got sight. Let's try sight. Okay, so line of sight. If we read the read the description here, line of sight. Test if an object has line of sight if it can see an object or position. That's what we want. We want line of sight because we want the enemy to attack if it can see the player. And you can't see through solid objects. It's like the walls in our game. You can't see through those, so it won't attack yet. So line of sight. And then we want the enemy to move to the player when it has line of sight. So we want it to move, oh, move to, perfect. Move an object to a position with an acceleration and deceleration. That's exactly what we want, so we wanna add move to. And then we want the enemy to flash when it gets hit, so flash. There we go. So see how I thought through that? I came up with an idea of what I wanted to happen. I went into behaviors and then just started searching around for what Construct already has inside of their behaviors and I was able to find everything that I needed. So if you have a new idea of a new mechanic, see if it's in behaviors before you code it from scratch. All right, so we're gonna change a few things about some of these behaviors. So the line of sight, I'm gonna leave empty the same as it was before. Nothing's gonna change about that. This move two though, I do need to change it. So my max speed of being 200 is just too fast for me. So I'm gonna change that back down to 50. 
And I'm going to go ahead and leave acceleration, deceleration alone, rotate speed is zero, and then we're gonna go ahead and check stop on solids. And then we're gonna uncheck set angle. It's not gonna actually rotate, it's just gonna move to, and it's gonna keep that, uh, that same like front facing look. This stop on solids is important because now it can't phase through walls. It can't phase through objects. If it runs into a solid, it will stop. So that will be super helpful. Let's go into the event sheet and start coding this. All right, let's add an event. And this is when the enemy has line of sight to the player. So what's gonna happen when the enemy sees the player? So let's go down to line of sight. Has line of sight between positions, no, to an object. Because the object is the player. So when it can see the player, we want it to do something. All right, so what do we want it to do when it sees the player? Well, we want it to move towards the player and then play the walking animation. So let's code that. So we're gonna move to, the enemy is going to move to an object. That object is the player. So if it has line of sight, it will move to the player, okay? It's moving, but we've left it in its idle animation, so it's just gonna glide across the screen like a ghost. So let's go ahead and switch its animation to be the walking animation. So set animation to exactly how we have it spelled in our sprite, walking, done. All right, this is what we have so far, but we do want to change it up so that if it can't see the player anymore, it stops, or by default, if it doesn't have line of sight, tell it what to do. So we're gonna copy this code here, copy, and then we're gonna paste it in. And what we're gonna do is right here, I'm gonna see how, see how this was this whole event was selected. I just wanna select the, the conditional event. I'm gonna right click it and I'm going to choose invert, which is going to say that the enemy does not have line of sight of the player. So this is the opposite. We inverted this event here. And now instead of doing this move to, we wanna stop the move to. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that and add an event where the enemy is going to move to, and actually we want stop move to, so we're gonna stop the move to. Awesome, and we're also going to set the animation from walking to idle. So we go ahead and freeze, and then we set the animation for us just standing there. So now, if the enemy sees us, it walks towards us, and if it doesn't see us, it stops. If I play this game, you can see that the enemy starts walking towards me because it has line of sight to me. Now we can't break that line of sight because, well, there are no solid objects in the scene so the enemy always can see us. We're gonna solve that in a little bit. All right, so the next thing that we wanna do is if we throw a, sh uh, a throwing star at the enemy and it collides with the enemy, we want the enemy to stop moving we want it to uh, destroy the shooting star, we want it to flash, we want it to wait, and then we want it to destroy the enemy so that we, it's basically a one hit kill for the enemy. So we're gonna add an event. The enemy collides with an object. Collision with another object. And that object is the throwing star. All right, so now when the enemy collides with the star, we're gonna do some stuff. Well, the first thing that we wanna do is, it's a one hit kill. So the enemy is dead. So we wanna stop it from moving. It can't move, it's dead. So we're gonna go ahead and add in a, a little action here. It's going to go to that move two that we have before and we want it to stop. So stop the move two. That's the very first thing we want it to do before it waits, before it flashes, before anything. We want the enemy to freeze so that even though it's dead, if it continues to move and it hits us, it still damages the player, even though we've killed it with our throwing star. Next, we wanna actually destroy the throwing star. So we're gonna grab the throwing star and destroy it. This way, the throwing star can't go through enemies and kill like two or three of them in a row. As soon as it encounters one, it gets embedded, embedded in that enemy and it stops and gets destroyed. Now we're gonna go ahead and flash the enemy to give us an indication that we've actually hit the enemy. So we're gonna grab the enemy and we're gonna grab that flash. 
and we're gonna start the flash. Now, this is a little bit important because what we wanna do is we wanna set up this flash so it takes as long as the wait before it gets destroyed. So the on time is gonna be 0.1, the off time is gonna be 0.1, but I only want it to flash um, a little bit, so I'm gonna say 0.2. So it'll turn on, turn off, and then that's it. It'll just flash, and then we'll wait, and it'll get destroyed. So we need to add in a wait here. Why are we adding in a wait? Well, because if, and we're gonna make this wait the exact same amount of time as the duration of the flash, because we want the game object, the enemy, to flash before it gets destroyed. If we fire this flash and then immediately afterwards fire the destroy, this flash doesn't know to wait. It doesn't have a built-in wait. It will flash for as many seconds as you tell it and also run the next command. It's, a, it's an async event, so it will flash and continue running the next last bit of code. So we're gonna wait 0.2 seconds before we destroy the enemy. Let's try this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and show my entire snippet of code here. So line of sight, it doesn't have line of sight, and then what happens when we hit it with a throwing star. Let's play the game and see if it works. All right, so I can run away. I hit the enemy, it flashes a couple of times and then gets destroyed. It's working exactly the way we want it to. This is awesome. We have a working enemy. Now that we have an enemy, we can add in health to the player so that the enemy actually is dangerous. Let's do that in the next video.